What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. I've uh, been wanting to make this video actually for quite some time, uh, maybe even like, I would say a few months, but maybe probably well over a year, I'd say I've, I've been wanting to make this video. Um, but there's, it's so hard to make videos like this because this is the most uh, vulnerable and um, you know, you're sharing stuff that you don't know how it'll be perceived. But you know, at the end of the day, the world needs more of this, right? The world needs more people speaking their truth, um, telling real stories as opposed to all the bullshit that you see people posting on social media. So yeah, like I'm gonna talk about uh, my relationship with my, my now wife and my daughter and really how men's work uh, saved that relationship. Otherwise I was gonna go down a different path. Uh, but first and foremost, I just wanna talk a little bit about men's work. Most people hear that term, or some people have never even heard that term before. Um, you can think of it as therapy, but really it's, it's therapy for men. And that's more than just talking, right? And so if you can imagine like way back in the day, men probably sat around circles and talked about a lot of different things, right? Women actually do this currently, which is fantastic. They talk about their feelings, their issues, whatever's going on with other women. But rarely um, do you see men uh, talk about these issues. So, you know, men's work is generally men facilitators helping other men um, in various different, uh, you know, aspects of their life. Um, and I never really heard that term before. Everyone's used to like therapy and stuff like that. Um, I'm not necessarily sure like therapists are the best for everybody, but that term men's work. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about like what's going on in the men's space, right? And I feel like ever since the, the pandemic started, it's exposed a lot of things. And I personally believe that right now with all the things going on in the world, with all the toxic masculinity talk and all this other talk that men have been totally isolated and men are like lone wolves and i just want to read off some i have uh some notes that i took these are some statistics that you may or may not be aware of but you should be aware of these things and and how they pertain to men um, these are not my opinions these are facts these are real statistics and studies and you can go look that stuff up um, if you please but I'm just gonna start with the fact that men lead every single negative health statistic that doesn't involve ovaries or breasts. Does that make sense to you? We lead as men all the health issues that pertain to humans. We lead in that category. 77% of suicides in the US are committed by men, 77%. Eight out of 10 male suicides are related to either a breakup or a divorce. That's pretty crazy. 80% of divorces are female led, meaning that the female initiated the divorce. And God knows how many sexless marriages there are um, in this world currently. 75% of the homeless rate goes to men. 75% of all the homeless people in the U.S. are men. Addiction, depression, obesity, suicide, death rates are skyrocketing. And men lead all those categories. Good job, guys. We're doing great. <clears throat> and now we have a whole younger generation, men between the ages of 18 and let's say low 30s. These guys are all isolated, addicted to porn, because back in the day, it used to be men getting degrees you know, women staying at home and working, and that has kind of like flip-flop. Now, women lead that. Women are getting more degrees than men. 
And so what men are finding is that, let's say you're in your 20s and 21, 22, whatever, no girl in that age group wants to date that guy because those girls are in college and doing better things. And what they're looking for is an older man who will, who's got their shit together. So you got this whole generation of younger guys that have never been in relationships. Um, they're not really having a lot of sex. Um, they're not really communicating and interacting with other men. And so like, they're just addicted to porn. And so you have all these like relationships now where like the women don't know what to do because like the guys are addicted to porn. And so like, can't you see like, we're in a fucked up state of, of uh, mind right in, in world right now. So I just wanted to like share all that with you. And if you've never heard these stats before, it probably just blew your fucking brain. But that's like the reality of what's going on for men, right? And then, and now I'm gonna get into my story about like how men's work really helped me, but I wanna just share one more thing. Most men my age, I'm, I'm 43, <clears throat> we have pretty much grown up as, as boys watching our fathers work, right? They worked and worked and worked and they did that for the family, you know? Like they're doing that for the family to support the family. That is their contribution. And so, so many boys are growing up into men thinking that like their only contribution to a relationship and the family is through what they bring in financially. So like that burden of finances is just fucking huge for men. So how did men's work save my, my relationship? I'm not gonna get into the, all the details of everything, but like most men and like most relationships, <clears throat> I met my partner on a dating app. Coincidentally, she wasn't even from my city or state or town. She was just like traveling through. And uh, like that was the way like she just like made friends and whatever. Um, and so like we, we, we connected, we spent time together. Um, <laughs> she was like doing a lot of different yoga retreats all over the world. So like wherever she would go, like I would just tell her like, Hey, just let me know where you're going and I'll be there. And that's like what she did. And so like went to Mexico and Arizona and, and Costa Rica. And like, we probably did that for a few months. <clears throat> and then she said like, I'm moving in and, uh, she moved in and like, literally we, we got pregnant. And so like, here I am. Uh, late 30s at that time. I had been single for a really, really long time. I was in some toxic relationships in my 20s. And I was pretty much single for the last like eight to 10 years prior to meeting her. And now all of a sudden I have a, a live-in girlfriend and a child on the way. And so like as a man, the only thing that I really remember was just like going into like provider mode. <clears throat> Um, doing like what my father did and probably what he, his father did was just go to work, provide support, you know, that, that type of cycle. But really what my partner wanted during this time was more presence, was more connection, both like just being there in person, more physical connection, whether it was sex or just holding her, holding her hand, just more of that. I have really no idea how to be a father either. And long story short, we were heading down a path where instead of coming together, um, we, were, we were slowly separating. And I'll, and I'll add this too. Uh, we had a home birth, which I was totally for, but I had like no support. So those of you that don't know, my beautiful daughter, we had a home birth, which was amazing. I'll never change that experience for, for anything. It was so beautiful. Um, but I had like no support, right? Because nobody really does home birth. So everybody that I told that we were having a home birth, oh my God, are you sure you're gonna do that? So I had nobody to really talk to because anybody that I would talk to about the birth or all the things that we were doing, like the way we were raising her, like as far as like breastfeeding, um, like my daughter's five, she still breastfeeds. That's crazy in this world, but it's so normal everywhere else, right? But you tell that to somebody, like a guy telling that to another guy, you know, it's like, yeah, you're crazy. I would never allow that, all that bullshit. So I was basically alone in that department. But anyway, 
<clears throat> we had our baby. And like I said, I just went into provider mode. Thinking that I was doing the best that I could for the relationship and for the family by providing, by having a nice house, by having all these things. But reality, my partner did not give a fuck about any of those things. What she wanted was presence, connection. She wanted me to hold space for her, which I had no idea what that was. <clears throat> I had to learn all of that. And so like, make a long story short, we were at a point where I was going to lose my partner and I was going to lose my daughter. And I say lose my daughter because she probably would have moved somewhere uh, far um, and I would have had to make a decision. You know, do I stay in Philly at that time um, and go travel to see my daughter? Do I go move to where they are? I mean, like, these are the thoughts that were coming down my head. And there were definitely times after, like, arguments and stuff that, like, I would definitely just sit and just be like, fuck this. Like, I don't need this. Like, I'd rather just be alone. It's easier, right? And I'm sure that's, that's how a lot of divorces and split-ups happen is you get to that point. So that's where we were. That's where we were at the point where it was pretty much gonna be over and I was gonna lose everything. But meanwhile, she's telling me all these things that she wants for me and I just really kept avoiding it. Um, and so I, I accidentally found men's work. Maybe I'll make another video on that, but Every man says they'll do anything for their family and their kids. And that was the exact position that I was in. Am I gonna do the things that I need to do for my family and my kids? Or am I willing to give up everything and quit right there? So I, I joined a men's group. I started reading more about men's groups and what's going on with men and how we've been programmed. And I will share one story with one of my men's group's experiences. We were, this particular men's group was an online men's group. Um, and every week we, we had calls where think of like, you know, just sitting around the circle, right? Men sharing and talking. And after one of those circles, I realized something profound that every single man that shared something had already lost something, either breakup or divorce every single fucking one of them had already lost something. I was the only motherfucker on that call that had not yet lost something, which at that time was my relationship with my partner and my daughter. So I realized right then and there that this work was gonna be super important. I had to learn more about myself. I had to have some kind of tools that I could use to implement. And that's exactly what I did. And that's exactly how men's work helped me. And so, you know, yes, I was in those groups. Uh, then I gravitated toward to a one-on-one, uh, one-on-one, uh, one -on -one, a one-on-one -on -one mentor, somebody that shared a story. I just happened to resonate with his story. And, you know, I think we did about three to six months worth of like one-on-one -on -one work, uh, once a week sessions. Um, and he helped me navigate my situation and what I was going through and helped me step back into my manhood, helped me learn how to hold space, be more present, and be the leader that our partners are asking us to be. So that is literally how men's work saved our relationship. And though now fast forward from when that happened till now, you know, me and my family moved to Florida. We've been here two years. Uh, last year, me and my partner got married officially. So our relationship has gotten closer. It's not where we want it to be, but it's, and that's, that's the point of being married and being in a relationship that you grow together and get closer as opposed to the opposite. My relationship with my daughter is fucking amazing. I couldn't ask for a better relationship with my daughter. So men's work has helped me tremendously with my skills of being in a relationship and being a father 
And that also translates into being a better man and being a better person so that I can help lead and show others. So yeah, that's how it helped. And now I'm slowly getting into a position where I feel like it's my duty to heal myself and then show others how to do the exact same thing. So if you're struggling with any relationship issues, fatherhood, relationship with your partner, uh, relationship being a father, a friend, a human, how to level up, let's connect, let's put that work in. Because if you say you're gonna do everything, you're just lying to yourself if you don't. And if you're a father, your kids are watching you right now. So if you say you're gonna get in better shape, you better get in fucking better shape. If you say you're gonna eat better, you better fucking eat better. If you say you're gonna do anything to strengthen your relationship with your partner and your kids, you better be putting that fucking work in. Because there's way too many guys that are way too comfortable just doing their work, coming home, binge watching on Netflix, drinking all that shit, eating all that bullshit. And then when somebody says, you've got time to do all this other stuff, they just say, I don't, I don't have the time. I don't know, I got a family, I got kids, I got a job. I don't, I, can't, I don't have time for all this other shit. You're just lying to yourself. So when you put in that work, you'll see that shit change. Reach out if you need help. Peace. Uh.